I have the Z0 set right there. That's at uh, uh, the uh, X positive 0.25, Y minus 0.25 position right there. The uh, Essentially, the end of the zero is right here for X0. Y0, of course, is on this edge. I initially set it on the corner of the vise and then jog the axis over minus 2.75 and then set that as X0. Uh, stock 10.5. Three and a half by one thick. Uh, that's a center line mark just for reference so I could lay it out uh, and put it in the vise properly. I didn't mark any of this in advance, just did some quick measurements after. So I'm going to run the uh, code without a tool in it, see how, how that goes, make sure everything looks good, and then I'll uh, load the real tool and hit go. All right, the I had some trouble with the uh, zero the first time through. I'm not going. I'm not going to my usual perch up there. There's too much coolant flying around everywhere. Anyway, I had some trouble with the zero uh, related to the vice mounting. Uh, apparently, the T-slot nuts were hanging up on something, which caused it to not zero at the correct. Sorry, caused the vice to not be held down properly. Uh, which caused something to move while it was cutting. Very bizarre. Anyway, fortunately it moved away from the uh, cutting tool, didn't cause any trouble. Good finish there. I arranged the, uh, the cuts specifically so that I would get pattern that I was looking for here. Not that not that it's all great, but better than better than the way the CAM program wanted to do it in the first place. Anyway. Looking good. There we go. Alright. Making the first pocket of two. getting ready to turn these two parts which are attached to the carrying material still into two separate parts by flipping the part over and removing the carrying material material from the back side all right the parts out of the vise I have about uh, 180 thousandths of carrier material material left here and the width of the the uh, edge on this from the side of the part to the side of this uh, stock is about it is 125,000, so but the bar stock uh, from the mill is uh, three and a half inches, and this part is three and a quarter, so there should be an eighth of an inch on either side. Of course, it may vary from that a little bit, but that's about right. So I will uh, I'll load it up, and that those uh, details are relevant for setting up the zero position on the part. All right, the stock's in the vise right now. I'm um, using a parallel that's just about the smallest parallel I have right now. 
leaves about three-eighths of an inch from the top of the vise to the top of the parallel. That really doesn't matter too much other than that, that I have a good grip on the part. Two things of note, the uh, part is ten and a half inches wide, left to right. This is the center line at five and a quarter inches, and then since the vise jaws are five inches wide, I went another two and a half inches over to the left. And that is the beginning of the vise, and that allows me to use the same X0, Y0 I had when I was machining the other side of this part. So that's important because I don't want to change the setup on the zero too much. The uh, Y0 does change. The Y0 was originally set on the edge of the vise, which is 125 thousandths over from the edge of the stock, the way it's set up right now. And the uh, the plan is to cut the cut the use a fly cutter to cut paths that are symmetric relative to the left and right sides of the part. So the idea being there is I have one path here, another path on the other side, and then I do a finish pass right down the middle so that the pattern on it is symmetric. So that's sort of an appearance thing. The idea uh, that I make it centered is based on the fact that the Y0 is now moving 125 thousandths from the edge of the vise to the edge of the stock. Again, it's an est excuse me. Again, it's an estimate. There's no real uh, need to verify this. Just like the part being left to right doesn't matter too much, which is why this mark works fine. Uh, I have plenty of room in the uh, in the tool path to shift the thing around. Uh, you know, an eighth of an inch either way, so that should be fine. So I haven't set the, I haven't adjusted the zeros yet. In fact, I will check that right now. I have my uh, chamfering tool in there from the last operation that I did, and I will send the uh, mill to X zero Y zero. And that's that's good enough. I'm satisfied with that. And I see it is off the edge of the stock. So. Uh, the way to fix that is by moving y, y point one two five. Change the position. You can see it's at the edge of the part now, and then clicking y zero. Now that's the new x zero y zero location. One important thing to note, I did not uh, previously change the Z0. I'm setting that now. I just remembered that I hadn't done that yet. There's effectively the difference in uh, material thickness uh, or material position, I guess, due to the machining operations of first step and the differences in parallel height. So instead of three eighths of an inch first time, it turns out it's a lot closer to a quarter of an inch. So I have my Z0 tool loaded and it's set. I want the zero to be. So I'll zero this out and call it good. Just as a check, one thing I learned with a piece of stock this big before, the uh, the zero location can change quite a bit. Now, see, I obviously have this thing out a lot. It's way out of flat. It's uh, I started zero on this end. And it's at 15 on the other end. So it's 30,000 thickness variation across the part. Now that might be stock, might be a lot of factors, but I have to do something something to correct for that. So I hadn't checked that until just now, right here on the video. Right, let me check the Y. Y is not such a big deal, it's just an angle left to right. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm actually going to try flipping the part around, see if I. Uh, have some flatness issues. Uh, it reorient the part with the X, with the uh, the vice at the other end over here, the vice marking. So I'm flipping the, rotating the part 180 degrees, and see what impact that has. So I remove the stock from the vice, clean off the parallels, clean off the stock, make sure that was okay. And I've actually reset the zero here. And you'll see with no other changes. Let me, uh, have my Jog controller here. No other changes. That's a heck of a lot more reasonable. Fall off the end right here. Not terribly surprising, but that's a heck of a lot better. So I haven't changed anything except the uh, cleanliness of the part. So I've tested around the code and I uh, added a couple mods, uh, specifically some steps I missed in the uh, in the uh, programming when I did it quickly. I forgot 
couple of rapid moves, so I was moving at the feed rate, which wasn't any fun. Uh, so I added the rapid moves in, now I'm ready to load the tool and get started. That's a 60,000th depth of cut and a, oh, big mess. That's a uh, 30 inch a minute speed rate. This is the last uh, roughing, roughing pass, if you want to call it that. That moves into uh, uh, finish pass. That's a little bit nasty. Kind of a gap between the parts, so you now see I have two separate parts there. Done.